Hi, everybody. I'm joined here by Leslie Kohlberger. She's part of SBC's. I just have to figure out that's the camera working. There we go. <laughs> uh, she's a program designer and evaluator for Sustainable Buildings Canada. And she and I have been working together to write a policy paper. We're very moved by this idea of uh, building for everyone. And I wanted to bring Leslie in to explain to you guys a little bit about how we're, the process that we're going through and what we're doing. Thanks, Bettina, and uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I hope that you really got uh, as much out of that presentation by Chen and Elania that this, as we did. Um, and really, it, it dovetails so nicely with the work that we are doing, work that we're embarking on right now in collaborating with a diverse group of people representing a number of different perspectives. Um, uh, I think we have eight people including, uh, well, we won't go through the list of who they represent, but I will say it's a very, very diverse group of, of thoughtful people. And we are expanding on a lot of the concepts that, that Chen and Alidia mentioned in their presentation. And in fact, we've, we've taken this, um, the concept of equity, diversity, and inclusion, and we will be expanding it to change, well, to encompass more, shall we say. And so I'm going to actually present a couple slides. I'm sorry, I have to lean forward to see my, here we go. Um, so we have uh, in our policy paper that we're working on, we have used the phrase D.idea cubed. And that represents decolonization, inclusivity, diversity, equity, and then AAA is the anti-violence anti-racism and accessibility. We felt that broadening equity, diversity, and inclusion to also include anti-violence, anti-racism, and accessibility were very important components to make this truly inclusive and diverse. And we also wanted to be sure to start with the concept of decolonization because we are um, on this land and we are grateful for the opportunity to be here and we want to acknowledge the, that the you know that the decolonization is a very important part of uh, where we're going. Um, so the other thing that we wanted to mention as we work on this idea, and it really is a good idea, I would say. Do you think it's a good idea? I think it's a good like, idea. It's like, not a game. It's, no, it's a good idea. Good idea. We're not playing. Yeah. Um, Do you guys agree? I think so, right? So what we're what we're starting with on this paper is looking at the, the problem statement, like why are we doing this? Um, and we're really trying to advance the synergies on the philosophies around being more inclusive in the building space. And I think that when we look at the construction industry currently, we recognize that um, there's a lot of opportunity to advance uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion in this industry or the sector. And so that is why we feel that a policy paper from Sustainable Buildings Canada would be beneficial to help to amplify how do we get there? And it's, it's really looking at this as a calling in. It's not a calling out. We're not saying anyone's doing anything wrong, but it's also at a time when we're seeing the industry is nearing and aging out. So in the next five years, I think the statistic is about 80% of people working, you know, the, the skilled talent within the construction industry will be aging out, which means that there will be all kinds of new opportunities for people to become those skilled work workers in the building sector. And as you are watching these presentations and learning so much around sustainability and practices beyond sustainability, including diversity, and um, the accessibility and all the things that you've been hearing um, around the environment and, and the built space uh, in this week so far, I think that it, it can be a great call to action for all of you to maybe, if there's an interest, pursue something and, uh, and expand your talent to support this space. So this is really where we're coming from. And just in case you didn't know what everything stood for, we talked about it on the starting slide, but the, the focal areas of the paper is really starting with why we are doing this in a truly um, authentic fashion insofar as we are consulting with eight um, people who represent very diverse perspectives. And we will be going through each of the components that are the focal areas of the paper um, to build upon you know, why is decolonization so important uh, to, to acknowledge 
why is inclusivity important for this industry and how can the industry benefit from being more inclusive? And similarly, we'll go through that exercise with diversity, equity, anti-violence, anti-racism, and accessibility. So I think that that is really just a high level summary of what we're hoping to accomplish with this policy paper. Um, and we always want to start with why, and it is, like I say, a call to action and a calling in. And it's a good idea. It's a good idea. It's a good idea. <laughs> Great. So we wanted to leave some time for you. I, I, I don't know how familiar you, does this make sense to you? Have you guys heard of a policy paper? What does it mean? Who will see it? What, what does it do? It, it, uh, it really does sometimes come very organically. We have both been very inspired, both by the things that have been happening in the news in the United States and of course in Canada and worldwide. And uh, I think we all feel this need to do something to make it better. And, and in the built environment, we, have, we can have such an enormous impact uh, and hopefully we can make a positive impact rather than a negative impact. So we'd love to hear your thoughts or your, any questions you guys have, feel free to turn on your cameras, feel free to Feel free to join into the conversation. Maybe if any of you have ever felt like you don't belong in a building, that sort of experience or. Yeah, the, the ideas really resonate. So Brian's just saying she's never heard of a policy paper. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about a policy paper. That's great. I think that when um, when we look at the landscape of knowledge, anytime you embark upon work in a space, you usually look around to see um, and as students, you'll appreciate this. What's been written in this space? What's what's the thought? What's the knowledge brokerage? What what is the what can we build on? What is, what is the evidence that we can be informed by? And so, really, what we're doing with the policy papers, we're helping to amplify these evidence-informed pieces that we know to be uh, very valuable to industry and to human beings. And we're at a really pivotal time, I would say, in terms of coming. Uh, through um, such a disruptive phase of the pandemic. And also through that disruption, we have had, um, you know, really a, a, a major call to action when it comes to conciliation. So truth and, and reconciliation or conciliation, depending on your perspective on that. Um, and of course, we've had some major awareness building around the, the importance of Black Lives Matters and the importance of uh, mm -hmm. currently and, and more recently with um, the anti-Asian racism uh, and uh, I mean even yesterday there was something in the news about anti-Semitism so it's always surprising I think for people who are heart-centered to see these these perspectives come out or these unfortunately like very violent um, uh, oppressive and dangerous systemic issues so we are as a policy paper putting Sustainable Building Canada um, a voice into the, the the different papers that are out there to help to not only amplify what's already been written, but to take it one step further and also to write it within the concept of sustainable built, the, the actual built industry. There's some great questions here. Okay. So can you expand on what you mean by decolonization in the built environment? That is a great question. I think that for the decolonization of the built environment, a lot of what Aledia and Chen talked about are really examples of that. So that is looking at um, how do we acknowledge this space within which the building is fun functioning um, and recognizing that from the indigenous ways of knowing of uh, every, um, whether it's uh, the water creature, ground creature, a land, uh, sorry, air creature or celestial, every um, creature, be it a tree, be it uh, the, the, the spores, like whatever it is, everything has an energy to it and a spirit. And so if we are acknowledging that, then we're careful about what our water runoff is going to be so that it's not going to be polluting um, the lake. We're going to look at ways to ensure that the water can be brought into the land and can be absorbed to help the root structures that are there. So that's from a water piece. We're gonna look at how do we construct it in a way that is mindful of, um, of the, the actual materials that we use. Um, and so it's really, that's what I think we mean by decolonization is to take that, that heart-centered view towards each step of the design 
and construction phase of the project um, so that we're mindful and heartful if that's a term yeah. i might have just made it up like it. Um, but i think you know it's, it, it's that heart-centered and human-centered and, and um, spirit-centered approach to the work i hope that answers the question and if there is follow-on this we can always have more discussion uh, tomorrow we're having a whole workshop a whole that we'll workshop. talk a little bit about this as part of it so you'll have a great chance to, to contribute to that yeah leslie will be the uh, facilitator for tomorrow's uh, professional workshop so uh, we're going to dive pretty deep into a lot of these topics so uh, these are all great miles says these are all great ideas but i'm confused how some of them can be incorporated into the buildings like how can a building be uh, be anti-racism is it an intrinsic piece of the building or is it more about the building function and it's, it's all of that Yes, Miles, love those questions. Yeah. I have to say you're bang on. It's, it's all of those things. It's about uh, making the space welcoming for everyone and, not, and inviting, sorry. And, sorry, I just yeah. realized as well. And, and uh, what Leslie was talking about earlier, one of the things that uh, we really want to focus on is, is not just the building itself, but the practice of building and the design of building. So, uh, you know, we know that the workplace can be a, a difficult place, an unwelcoming, a stigmatized place. And we're seeing a shift in that, but uh, but but within the building sector, within the design sector, you know, uh, we we had a discussion just the other day with a client, and uh, it's a it's a long term care home for yeah, in the, in a northern city in Ontario, and they're including eighteen beds for Indigenous uh, people, and so we were saying, well, who decided that? And they said, oh, well, you know, this was. And it all it all seemed a little bit like a little bit forced, I think it's prescriptive, perhaps. prescriptive, Not ticking authentic. boxes. <laughs> it really does come down often to who has the power. And if you look around a room and you're in a design meeting or you're in a decision making meeting and every face in there looks exactly the same and they've all lived and worked in a very similar environment, then those are the voices that you're going to hear. So uh, this idea of D plus idea cubed is is, is we need to hear from everybody. We need to not just hear anecdotally, but really bring bring those topics to the, to the center and to the And I would add that um, in terms of this project, I know the city of Toronto has some really forward thinking uh, policies on inclusivity and that they will be partnering or they will be requiring the, the design uh, designer of the building to collaborate with an Indigenous organization through this. So that is also a, a, a step towards decolonization. So it's really around taking that action to incorporate these, these thought processes more, more wholesomely or fulsomely. There's a fantastic article, which I'll share with you guys, uh, by a professor at the University of Alberta, which actually goes into sort of their steps for decolonizing architecture, because it's an area that as well, that when you first hear it, you think, what does that mean? And you know, uh, so so I'll be sure to share that with you. Uh, yes, it's oh my gosh. So there are two great questions. I'm all about decolonizing and indigenizing uh, my thinking. And sometimes something I grappled with is how to decolonize the built environment space. I didn't think it was ah. Oh, we run out. The next session is so important. You guys have to go and listen. But the conversation continues tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.